Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ramp Studio Comics. Got another digital painting video for you today. Uh, this isn't anybody in particular, this is a character I sketched up real fast. Probably got about 45 minutes into this so far, or maybe an hour, but uh, actually I don't even think it's that. But anyway, um, just real fast, kind of doodle, you know, practice. Uh, and what I want to show you is I start off really blocky like I did here with the gun, and then I kind of refine it till I get to, you know, more in this area. Probably take that even further, but... Um, so yeah, so I wanted to show you that technique and a couple quick techniques for doing some basic rendering uh, of some techie kind of stuff like, like this guy here. So what I do is, let's see, like I said, I start off very blocky um, and when I get in there and let's see, grab some of these brushes. I use a chalk brush right here. I'll show you the settings on that real quick because I get that uh, question a lot. Uh, just transfer is set to pen pressure on opacity jitter and flow jitter. That is it. And that brush, let me scale that up with the bracket keys. And that is a brush that comes with Photoshop. So nothing special there. Um, and for this demonstration, uh, that's all I'm going to use. So, all right. So, you know, I just kind of draw on these little techie lines like I'm doing here. Uh, try to define the shape a little bit more. Like I said, I start very crude and then... You know, here I'm starting to add in some of the little textures. Uh, one of the things that makes digital painting kind of neat and fun and uh, is when you can just kind of paint in these little obscure kind of little, you know, tattered, worn look, you know, things going on. Uh, it makes your, your paintings look a lot more realistic and uh, like you, you, you know, they're a little more thought out, I guess. Um, like adding even the, I, I did this kind of P9 future, you know, the P looks the same and I flipped it or whatever, so P9, maybe this is a series P9 bot or whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, just get in there and, and roughen up the edges, things like that. Um, but first what I do to get to that point is I'll just block in some hard dark and light. See, you see I'm working with just that chalk brush. Here's my paintbrush. Just dark and light and I flip back and forth. So I hit X, I got now light. Uh, or white and I can turn that down I usually work off about 30 percent and just slight you know uh, painting in you know slight tones and textures here I'm kind of picturing the in between the the bots arms uh, is this kind of bendable you know mesh or whatever so I'll draw that in little highlights of it like that um, I have him on a separate layer so I can erase uh, you know my original sketches as I go because you want to eliminate as much of the actual line art as possible uh, depending on the the style you're going for if you're going on more of a comic book look then you you would leave more of the line work uh, in this case I'm doing more of a painterly look uh, and with Photoshop remember hold spacebar it gives you a little hand tool and you can move stuff around real quick it's always nice uh, so I use a little bit of the smudge tool uh, I try not to overuse this but I know in the way that I paint I do uh, I think it becomes more of a crutch uh, from what I've been studying from other artists that are, are more seasoned and, uh, you know, that I learned from and stuff like that. Um, I think that what you want to get in the habit of is staying more on the brush tool and say you need to lighten up this shadow in between, uh, you know, this gray value and this one. You want to get in the habit of just holding alt, selecting the one. You see how it shows you interactively as you move it around the tone that you get. Grab the right tone and try to get in the habit of painting, you know, that tone out of the way, not not trying to smudge it as much. Um, I think it, you know, again, I'm not positive, I'm learning like you are, but I think that's for speed. Uh, you know, if you, if you get in the habit of painting everything in versus blending as much, you're going to move a lot quicker. Uh, there are portions, let's see, I want these highlights to point off to show uh, that they fade off as a, as a sharp ridge on this uh, uh, segmented metal. I would typically just smudge that over. Um, I guess if I did paint it over and use that effect we we're just talking about, I would sample the color right next to it, size the brush down with the bracket keys, and then paint that to a point. Like so. Now here the color is changing, so maybe I'll sample over here. Paint that this way. Sample the white paint that this way and I want that highlight to be really uh, th uh, thin if not it's gonna make the metal and the arm look way too bulky so 
I'll just keep sampling that and paint it down. You can see I'm also trying to get rid of that funky shadow right there. So that's the alt tool method. And, and I have to say, it does work pretty good. I, I don't do it that much, but I probably need to start doing it because I'm, I'm constantly grabbing the smudge tool, um, which again, like I say, I think it's more of a crutch at this point. So, so yeah, I'm just grabbing these different colors, sample them, trying to thin down that line. Now I got a bit of that highlight over here. I don't know if that highlight would even make it over there because by the time it gets darker here, that highlight's going to be really uh, subtle, if not gone. So I'm going to paint that down. I'll upsize the brush again with the bracket keys. Paint that down a bit. Actually it went way off the line anyways. So then I'll sample the darker color, the black, and I'll finish where I would picture this line going. I think it would go this way. And now I'll sample more of a gray and I'll give it a highlight on the side of this line, but I'll make sure it's a subtle gray, not a white. Yeah, I think that's more believable. So essentially that's all you're doing though. You're just trying to get believable values. And then I go back and I paint over top with uh, color mode and overlay modes and things like that, multiply, whatever looks cooler. Uh, I use the different uh, color modes to do that. But right now all I'm worried about is painting in the value to get some believable kind of tones uh, for the, you know, what I'm imagining here that this uh, robot cyborg thing might look like you know so there's more of the arm piece and then uh, lastly to to get that looking a little bit better well first I would I would probably take out a little bit more of this black again like I said I don't want any uh, one tip I would give is be sparing with your black and your white uh, both of them are easy to overuse I overuse uh, white highlights quite a bit so make sure that you're just very sparingly um, about the stark black and white in your design you want to work on subtle uh, subtleties of the tone and value and subtleties of the specularity. Uh, obviously cloth has a lot more subtle kind of uh, highlight than a, a chrome orb or whatever, or in this case a chrome character. So you got to work on those subtleties of that value. Train your eye to see that. Okay, so now what I would do is grab... Uh, little bit I got a darker gray I could probably work with this and I would start building in you know some tattered look you know like and then I look up here for reference if there's ones that I that I see that worked uh, I would kind of emulate that again in a different shape uh, I don't want it to look too repetitive uh, you can also make and, and get brushes for creating textures like this uh, stipple brushes work good just for what I'm doing here where I'm just throwing in some little tiny imperfections uh, I like painting mine in though, it doesn't take very long, um, and you can copy and paste if you do them on a separate layer and then merge them down if you're really trying to save time, uh, and you can even create your own and then save those uh, later on, and that's kind of what brushes are, so I guess that's redundant, but uh, what I'm saying though is that by painting them in, it uh, feels a little bit more like I'm, I'm digitally painting, or I'm painting, not uh, overusing the software, I guess. Um, but I'm not saying it's wrong to do the other way. The, the brushes are cool, and you're, you're going to be able to uh, mix them up, too, and make them look, uh, give it your spin. Uh, but the, definitely this little part here where you add the little uh, imperfections is big on making your, your work look a little bit more polished, I think. So even though you're kind of unpolishing it by giving it grit and grime, but it, uh, it looks a lot more natural and realistic. I know in a lot of my uh, first digital paintings, I was getting ripped on by people uh, on DeviantArt and stuff like that. And they're like, yeah, it's cool, man, but why is everybody so, uh, <laughs> what was it, sh overly shaded and, and airbrushed looking? And, and I, didn't, I didn't really get what they were saying, which is really strange that I didn't see it right away, but I didn't. And uh, now, now I can't help but see it. So thanks for that. I guess kudos to you for pointing out my flaws. Uh, you know who you are if you're watching, <laughs> but uh, you know it's all good stuff. It does help. See, like, uh, and for instance, uh, I like. Let me circle it real quick. I like this one right there. To me, that looks almost like he took a shot to the shoulder, and it's got a nice little indent and a little highlight there. So that works. Where this one almost looks protruded outward. So I would study that and fix that. Uh, one of the shadows is off to make it do that. Um, so that's that's how you just kind of 
keep refining it. Uh, and, and I guess what I would do too is maybe blend that down. I think that's what I did to the other one. I also smudge uh, parts of these, especially the textured effects that I do. I'll kind of smudge those down and or paint paint them back and forth to get them right. So, um, and what else? I guess the I'll show you kind of the highlight lines that I do. I explained that a little bit there, but um, I just want to make sure that this video covers a, a good few things so that you can work on this stuff yourself. Oh, got it. Uh, one more thing that, that uh, helps me out a lot. I'll grab the dodge tool, and again, don't overuse this as a crutch either, but it's kind of neat. Say you want the shoulder to be more in highlight, right? You can put it on highlights, up the exposure, and then do a nice little, and I'm using a soft brush right there, so like an airbrush does come with Photoshop. I'll show you just in case anybody says what was that. Transfer, set the pen pressure. That's about as basic as it gets, and it's just a soft brush. But now what happens, it gives a really quick, uh, right here will be a perfect example. Say I want the highlight to come across the bicep or whatever this is on the soldier. Uh, I could just take that right through here, kind of go this way. See, I'm pushing this direction. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, and bringing out that highlight right on the edge of the metal there, the segment. Uh, it even brings up some of the highlight and the textures, and, and you want that. That's all good. Uh, it might have made it too strong there, but I can paint that down uh, s slowly and get it to where I want it. So I would say that that's another cool thing uh, that the, you know, a quick deal you can do. You can take this and, like, you know, really throw in your highlights uh, pretty quickly, and, you know, that's too strong, but then I would paint it down. So uh, so that's another technique for, for doing... Uh, uh, metalized effects or whatever. Um, I think that's about it. I mean, I could probably go on and on, but I don't want to make this video too crazy long. So hopefully that helps you. Uh, I started out with an initial sketch. It was very boxy and blocky like this. And then I just kept painting and adding to it and working it to a uh, defined shape. And I'll show you part of this gun over here, how I would do that. So Say I got the light right there, and I'm thinking about where the highlights might hit this gun. I'm trying to, you know, obviously I don't want just a bunch of rectangular shapes in here, so I got a picture where there would be some roundedness to the firearm. Um, and I'm kind of picturing that, that this guy doesn't have a hand, that this his hand is his gun. It just kind of, you know, is built into him or whatever. Like I said, I don't think he's even a, a guy in there. I think it's a, a cyborg at this point. So hit X, flip back and forth, and just keep building these shapes in. Again, I've got my brush set down to around a 30%, and I'm just trying to find find shapes. You know, I don't. I'm still not seeing anything that I'm I'm digging here. Uh, I've got obviously my overall outline, and then I can use that too to erase and kind of build in that also. Maybe there's a bit of a uh, scope kind of thing going on here even though if he was a, a cyborg I don't think he would need a scope or, or if he was a robot I don't think he would need a scope maybe a cyborg would who knows I have no clue next time I'm talking to a cyborg I'll be sure to ask him all right and I'm saying I wouldn't grab the smudge brush but I am now in this case I'll tell you one thing I would do is I'd grab the hard smudge brush it's a hard round marker no shape dynamics I'll show you the settings Transfer is just set to pen pressure, really basic. And it's a hard brush that comes with Photoshop. And what this one does, it just pulls the uh, the tone. Whatever, wherever you start and you pull, that's wh where it's pulling from. And that comes in handy for trying to figure out shapes. At least for me it does. Uh, I'll just kind of pull tones around until something looks cool. And obviously I'll keep pinballing the size of the brush back and forth. I'm going to feel really silly if I can't get a good looking shape going here, but this is how I do it uh, when I don't have anything drawn out in mind. What, what I guess this is is a way for me to not uh, overdraw stuff. You know, I'm trying to figure out shapes by painting, which I'm not really excelling at right now. Let's, let's go back to painting it. I'll tone this all down. Now if I hit this, it locks transparency so I can't paint outside of the shape. So I'm going to just tone this down a bit and build it back up. Actually tone it way down. Grab the white again. Start with my brightest specular highlights. And let's try to just throw in some techie stuff in here and see if that helps. Yep, 
Yeah, see, it's starting to help. I'm starting to see the shapes now. Just got to keep working it. Maybe a little piece off to the side here. Uh, another thing that, that looks cool, I think, with techie stuff is a lot of floating pieces. So I'll try to, obviously, a lot of segments uh, and a lot of floating pieces are really popular now in a lot of drawings. I notice, like, um, for instance, say this has an opening right here. It recesses back. This piece comes forward, right, something like that. Uh, what I would consider a floating piece on this is, like, if maybe another piece came up and around up here. Oh, is it not oh I'm on lot. That's the other thing about lock transparency. You can't paint outside the shape uh, when you're trying to. And a floating piece would be like if this piece came up and around uh, something like that. Or, you know, you've got all this dark area in here. And then you've got a little, you know, piece in here that's just kind of floating and then another segment of piece that's floating like that and it, it just looks really alien or cool or different you know so that's that's all I was trying to explain and see how I just start finding these shapes now um, they're starting to get a lot easier to see and maybe I'm overdoing that same kind of thing there but it's uh it seems to be working this this area down here I feel will be a little bit trickier so I would just start drawing in some shapes and then getting and then pan back obviously yeah and it's starting to look you know, cool and techy or whatever. So, um, same thing like over here, I did more where I drew it in and then I would come back and start painting this in and bring out the shapes with the highlights and stuff like that. So, all right, anyways, I don't want this video going too long. It's already getting there. So, be sure to check out the Blackstone Eternal comic. Always love the support. You can find that on Indie Planet. Uh, like us on Facebook under Ram Studio Comics. And be sure to like and subscribe. And also, give me some feedback. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't, what I can improve on. Uh, keep the comments friendly, please. And, and always be sure to respond. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. And more on the way. Keep drawing. Keep having fun. Talk to you soon. Bye.